Well, they were very tight. So they stuck them to themselves. They had uh, two KGB guys with them, uh, sometimes three. There was always somebody from the embassy around. So they watched their step very carefully. They have very strict, very strict, very disciplined uh, rules. Uh, they were told not to fraternize with us in any way. There were two commanding officers. Uh, the first one, unfortunately, never made it back to Russia. It was the only plane we lost en route out of 125 that flew over. But in general, I got to know very well the second commanding officer that came about, uh, Chibisov. The other chap that I worked with, uh, Sadnikov, he was the only one of the group who knew anything about electronics. And one of the things I had to do is to translate all of the maintenance manuals into Russian. And there's certain terminology, I mean, I could speak Russian and so on, but certain technical terminologies that I just didn't know. So, and he did, so, and he didn't know the English, so, but between the two of us, I would sit down, make up an electronic diagram, and say, all right, what do you call this thing? And he would give me the name. Uh, for instance, the, name, the word for frequency is chistata. And I worked almost daily with Sonico. But so between the commanding officer, some of his staff, and Sarnikov, we got the long fine. Yes, we did fraternize. We had drinks together at the club. We were happy to have them. But we could go to their rooms and quietly, and sip rum and cokes and stuff. And, and especially when the crews came back, I mean, it fly about five, six planes at a time to Russia, uh, or ten, and then it'd come back. And it'd come back by naval air transport eventually from Europe. Most of these people just, they were just happy to get back here. They made a lot of friends in the town of Elizabeth City uh, because the merchants loved them. They were paid in dollars. And they spend these dollars like water. Uh, and the planes going back were full of contraband, you might say, especially whiskey uh, and things that were rationed in the United States. I mean, you had to have coupons to buy shoes, and for example. And but yet they would be able to go and get shoes. Back in those days, Woolworth stores had bins with goods in them, like a bins of socks, different sizes. Where they'd go in there and buy, look at the socks and take a whole bin full of socks and pay for them. How much? You know? and, and when the planes left the United States, they were fully loaded with merchandise. So there was very warm feeling between the local people and them in town. I saw a morning drive over and show the Russians how the United States got started. And so give a little twist to the history. It came sort of two o'clock, one o'clock in the afternoon, kind of hungry. We went to the main lodge and had no problem getting seated. And the uh, Colonel Chibisov and his crew, there were about four of them and two of us, six of us were there. We had beautiful service, beautiful food, and they were very impressed by this whole thing. Impressed by the town, what they were seeing, how people live, how they made out blacksmith shops and all that kind of stuff. And then uh, uh, we asked for the check, and the management came up and says, no, it's on us this time. 
and the Russians couldn't believe it. They just couldn't believe it that they were welcomed so well in the situation. <laughs>